What's up everybody? This is Ryan here. I have some slightly better lighting. It's kind of like spooky lighting. And I got a haircut. So the mop is gone. And today we're going to work on some practical applied software architecture. So uh, what I'll do, um, so this is going to be one of those live streams where I am basically going to be taking you along with something that I was already going to work on in my day-to-day -day work. And the topic for today happens to be uh, looking at sort of a general purpose software architecture for a variety of different platforms. Now, when I say that, if you've been listening to me for a while, then um, you know that I have really adamantly encouraged people to consider the idea that no single software architecture works great for every application or even every feature in a particular application. But with that being said, what we're doing here is we are taking this concept of separation of concerns, which is basically just taking like large blobs of code and, and pulling them apart. And if you don't know how to do that, you'll be watching me do that live, or you can click down below to take one of my courses on Java or Kotlin where I explain these things in simple terms. Uh, but what we'll do today is I'm going to actually draw or build the architecture. I'll talk a little bit about it. And then we will, uh, I've already built it partially in a project and I'll probably share this repository um, later. And uh, yeah, we'll just kind of fly at it. So. Let me start building it, and then as I do that, we can talk a little bit about what the end goals are here. And uh, what's up, Gen D? Thank you. All right, so this is GIMP, G-I-M-P. Great name, I know. Um, and this is just basically a free version of Photoshop, which is typically what I use because I uh, am not a big fan of Adobe, although they do make great products. And we're just going to draw this architecture. So I'm just going to select here, get that a nice dark gray. And then I think for my color, we're going to use something kind of like I normally use for wise ass. And then we're going to draw some squares and boxes. But I've learned a trick, which is to draw the text first before I draw the squares and boxes. It's a genius trick. Okay, so we're going to have a view, and that font size is way too big. Let's do 50, uh, maybe 65. That, that works. All right, so we're going to have a view. That's a good start. Arjun asks, do I use Linux? Um, you know what? Funny story about that. I had a laptop which runs uh, was running Ubuntu version 18, I think. And so I, I have played around with Linux. It, I wouldn't call it my primary operating system, but I, I am a fan of it. And that laptop actually broke last week. <laughs> I plugged in a, a microphone and uh, the uh, laptop shit itself. But uh, hopefully I will be able to get another laptop soon. And... I probably will load Linux on it again, but this particular computer does happen to be running Windows 10. Okay, so let's just uh, get a box going. So we're gonna go to edit, stroke selection. Now I'm just gonna draw some stuff and then as I start to um, draw this picture, I will explain what I'm doing. Um, okay, let's. that's a problem. I need to select the background. But yeah, in case you're ever wondering, I use GIMP, this particular program, for basically all of my um, thumbnails and graphics and stuff like that. Not that I'm, I've ever been especially good at thumbnails and graphics, 
I'm okay. Uh, now I'm breaking my rule again. We want to draw the, uh, we want to write the text first and then we write the boxes. I, I learned this uh, as a special trick because if you make the boxes and then you try and do the text and the text doesn't fit in the box, then you're screwed. You've got to start from the beginning. <laughs> so, all right. Oh, that's, uh, you know, I think I'd rather just make that a smaller font. Let's do something like that. So a presenter, let's actually say presentation. That's not how you spell that. Presentation logic or presenter, just so everyone knows what the hell I'm talking about. Um, click and drag that over there. And then again, we'll give it a box. And what I'm doing here is basically what we call UML. What's up, Corbena? Um, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, yeah, so this is basically my own version of UML. I forget what they call that unified modeling language, I think. But it's just a way of drawing software architectures effectively. Okay, so we've got that piece, and then we're going to do another piece, and th this is going to scare some people. <laughs> people are going to be like, what's he doing? Is that allowed? <laughs> All right, so we're going to have a... A view model. Oh shit. Pardon my language. Uh oh. We got a view model. Now we're going crazy. We got a presenter and a view model. What are we going to do? I don't know. Actually, I do know. Um, all right, let me just put this in a place where it's not going to be difficult to draw the lines between the boxes. Um. How's everybody doing today? I got up at 5.30 this morning, did my breathing exercises, did some meditation. Um, I guess I forgot to select. Uh, then I did a uh, pull-up workout followed by overhead barbell carries, uh, which is one of my favorite exercises because uh, I find my it really helps my posture to do um, just static overhead holds. Um, and pull-ups are really good too because they kind of they um, decompress your spine. Oops, I did it again. Uh, stroke selection. Um, Quaben asks, will this be done with Kotlin multi-platform? Um, you're actually going to see Quabena that I'm I'm building a general-purpose clean GUI architecture, and the end goal is that this would work on any platform. Yes. And it's actually not outside of the realm of possibility that I could have only the view um, being platform specific and both the presenter and the view model will be, um, uh, can be used in multi-platform applications. That's the end goal anyways, but I have kind of a short-term goal, which is to just wire these things together. Okay, so I've got the basic pieces here. Um, let me just rearrange this presenter thing so that it's just centered a little bit better. Oops, uh, I'll have to... Uh, so at this point we're going to go to flatten image. That turns it all into one layer. And I'm just going to move this around a little bit. I quite like GIMP. It, it's, you know, obviously Photoshop is going to be slightly better, but as far as uh, open source tools go, I'm quite happy with it. Okay, so this is really our starting point and what, what we're really going to be thinking about critically, and like I say, I'm not actually, here's the funny thing about this video, I'm not trying to teach you. This is a problem I am solving myself, a problem that I've been working on for the better part of three years, and a problem that I have solved the pieces individually in isolation, and now it's about putting everything together. Um, but, you know, I just want to stress that I'm actually, this really is live content here. Um, I didn't prepare any lesson plan ahead of time. We're just going to actually build a general purpose architecture, hopefully. But I wanted to share everyone the uh, UML diagram, what it looks like in an abstract way before we get into the code. All right. Uh, some of these lines might be kind of crooked. I'm not sure how much I actually care to make them perfectly straight, but let's just, you know, 
get started there. So um, we're going to have to have the view talking with the, what height is that? 432. Uh, some of these arrows might be kind of ugly, but oh, that's like too ugly. All right, I'm going to be a little bit OCD. Okay, so here's how we solve this problem. We want to mirror this arrow. <laughs> I'm sure people watching this, or some of them know me, and some of them are looking, are thinking like, what the hell is this guy doing? <laughs> I don't know. I couldn't tell you, to be honest. This is uh, live coding with Ryan. All right, so I'm just, oh, that was a good voice crack. All right, so I'm just copying that, and then I'm going to go to Layer, Transform, Flip Horizontally. There we go. Those arrows are just a little bit too ugly for uh, my liking. All right, and there we go. Uh, so then we just merge that down. And then I have a basic arrow. I can copy, paste it. Yeah, it's ugly, but that'll do. Okay, so we're going to start with the, so the view is going to be talking to the presentation logic. And the reason for this is that the view needs to tell the presentation logic what happens. What did the user do, basically? By the way, if you hear any background noise, it's because I have a metal roof above me and it is raining. Um, we're going to have the... Um, the presenter is going to talk to the view model and it's just going to be a normal reference. And this is really the key here is that not every reference here is actually going to be a normal one. Uh, that'll make sense later. So again, I'm just going to copy that to a new layer. Let's drag it over. I had to make a lot of these diagrams for the uh, courses that I've made. So I've gotten reasonably good at doing this. Again, uh, we'll do layer, transform, flip vertically. So the, the presenter is going to talk to the view. And I'm just going to make that a little bit longer. The view model, I should say, to be specific. OK, we're getting somewhere. Now, things are going to get crazy here. Um, we're going to use something that is my own notation. Um, someone earlier commented on it that it looked like some kind of alien language. But we're going to do something a little bit special. So we're going to have, we're going to draw an eyeball. And again, people who know me are probably used to this kind of stuff. And people who don't are going to be like, what is this guy doing? This is crazy. This is blasphemy. <laughs> All right. We're going to draw an oval, and I'm going to do stroke selection. Uh, that's a little bit too thick. Let's do three pixels. Now it kind of just looks grainy and weird, but you know what? Whatever. Let's draw an eyeball. So the first thing I'm going to do is we will um, draw a little eye. Uh, what would you call that? A retina, a cornea, right in the center. And some of you might be knowing where I'm going with this. This is going to be an observer, a publisher subscriber relationship like we see with RX Java, like we see with all kinds of things. And that's really what I'm trying to convey here is that this is a, um, the view is going to be observing the view model. And that shouldn't be a new idea to anyone really watching this, uh, unless you're a beginner, of course. In which case, that's totally fine if you have no idea what I'm talking about when I talk about the observer pattern. Okay, I'm going to copy that, paste it to new layer. I definitely made that shorter than it needs to be, but that's okay. Now we're going to go image. Let's rotate it. How do I rotate? I forget. Um, transform, rotate. Whoa, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's try that again. Layer, transform. I think I hit image transform. That's probably what that was. OK. So we'll just move that into place. We're almost done, folks. Don't worry, um, if you were worrying. 
Merge down. Okay, we're getting somewhere now. Bring in the noise. Okay, cool. Um, so I think that's basically it. Let me just think about this for a minute. Uh, the presenter will need to use the view to some degree, although we'll, we'll talk about this later. Um, okay. Let's just, uh, I see there is a question there. I'll answer that in, or look at it in just a moment here. Mr. Just Evil, or Mrs. Statistically speaking, probably Mr. Okay, so we're just gonna make one more little arrow here. Um, okay, and now we're gonna, let's uh, rotate this. Um, how do we do that? Uh, layer, transform, flip vertically. Okay. So, um, this is about as much detail as I care to go into. This should give everyone hopefully a working idea of what I am building here. Excuse me. Okay, and let's just uh, write this down here. So a general purpose, clean GUI architecture with no third party frameworks. All right. Well, it's ugly as hell, but uh, this this is our starting point. I actually have a lot of code, so we've, I've already coded most of this. Really what I'm going to be worrying about today is this observer publisher subscriber relationship will be the terminology that I use for today. Um, Mr. Just Evil asks, what do I think about the cross-platform technologies like Xamarin Forms, Dart, Flutter? Um, I think it's a good idea to explore a cross-platform uh, stack, particularly if you have taken the time to learn the fundamentals of object-oriented programming or um, building some kind of Here's what I would say, you would probably want to start with one platform and develop your skills as a programmer, which are going to translate to whatever language you work in. Um, as far as jumping straight into multi-platform, I wouldn't advise that because what you'll find with all of these frameworks is that um, it's very rare that you'll get a framework that is very seamlessly multi-platform, even though a lot of them will claim that. But uh, I don't have any particular preference over Dart, Flutter, Kotlin multi-platform, uh, React. Uh, I don't tend to be very dogmatic until I've actually used technologies. And, but uh, yeah. Okay, so we've got a rough idea here. Now let's get into the actual code. So I've got this project and I haven't put, uh, shared it on GitHub yet, but I probably will. But I want to finish it first. So let me show you what I've got so far, because there's a couple things that I'm leaving out of that diagram I just drew there. So I'm just gonna move that over. Let's do move to right side, top right. No, nope, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> Where the hell does just moving it to left go? There we go, right bottom. I, I don't understand how that's right bottom, but okay. Cool story, Android Studio. Okay, so uh, what we've got so far, by the way, um, for anyone watching this, I see we have a few viewers. Tomorrow around this time, a little later, I will be doing a live stream Q and A, and I'm going to be talking about when not to, when to, some reasons to consider not using third-party libraries like Rx Java, Live Data, Jetpack components. Making a sometimes it's important to ask yourself whether these sorts of frameworks are causing more problems than they are solving. And I'm not saying that's always the case. And I'm not saying don't use frameworks. And I'm not saying I will never use frameworks. But that's going to be our topic for tomorrow. And some of you might want to come and watch that because it should be. Uh, 
I've got a lesson prepared. It'll, I'll try to keep the lesson pretty short, and then we'll just get into general Q&A stuff. So um, what I've got so far, I have built a view. Um, this really is just a, a toy problem, a demo application. So I've got um, my activity is the view. Um, we have, uh, I'll just show you. Now, normally I would use a fragment, but like I say, this is a demo. Um, in this activity, we will see, it's a little bit hard to see, but we just have um, text view, text view, switch, switch, progress bar, progress bar. And uh, these things are appropriately labeled. So we've got label some text left, label some text uh, right, and on and on you get the idea. And there's a reason why I did that because I want to be able to select for particular widgets. So that's what our view looks like in this relationship. Um, and then the we'll have a quick look at the presentation logic or the presenter, or I typically just call it a logic class like I do here. So these are some details that I haven't yet included in the, or I haven't included in that diagram. But all of my logic classes are going to extend a, a base abstract class called base view logic. Um, they're all going to have this generic type, and that will be an event. And we'll see what that means later. And they're all going to have this on view event. So really what we are describing here in code using an abstract class is the relationship between the view and the presentation logic. We're describing this arrow here. This is the only way the view may talk to the presentation logic through an abstract class, or you could use an interface if you didn't want these things here. Um, if you didn't want to have fields and potentially uh, implemented methods. Um, this thing will need to I'll give you an overview before I go too crazy implementing this stuff, but obviously this thing will um, implement base view logic. And this is how you use generics. So we just give any name. You can use literally any, well, not literally, but you, um, obviously you don't want to use something that's going to conflict with um, a class or a type that already exists, but if, in case you've ever, ever wondered, by convention, we usually do like one capital letter to name generics. But just understand, that's, that's just a convention. We could say um, event would be pretty descriptive of what's going on. But I, I'm just going to use T. That part's not really important. What's important is that when we implement or extend this class, that we supply an actual type. And the type we're going to supply here is called update view event. And then once we add that in, I can hit Alt Enter, implement methods. And you'll see here now we have this is the um, entry point of interactions with the view. Like I said before, what we just did here is we just implemented this arrow, at least in the presenter. All right, now this, uh, this presenter is going to have a view model. So we're going to create that private. Um, now let's move into the next thing that I made. So I made, I'm in the process of making a contract class. If you've ever watched me code, you'll know that I like to do that. We'll typically have a view and a view model there. Okay. And now this is the really important part that I figured out yesterday. Um, it might be worth going into some of the history of what I'm doing here. So let me just share, let me just explain that really quickly. And um, I'm gonna be dropping a lot of knowledge bombs here <laughs> on software architecture. So you, I know some people are just kind of casually listening, but, um, and that's totally fine, but uh, you might want to follow along with this part here. Let me just find the story. So ages ago, not that long ago, back in April 2019, 
I wrote an article called Android Tutorial, Model View View Model Awkwardness. And the whole purpose of this was to explain to people that um, there isn't actually a single way to do Model View View Model. And if anyone ever tells you that there is a single way to do Model View View Model, then that person probably has not actually looked at a significant number of repositories which claim to implement model view view model. Um, in my own research, I uncovered two primary versions, um, subsets of this general three layer architecture. There is of course one ironclad rule for any model view view model implementation, which is that you may not reference your view classes from the view model. You may not have an arrow that points from the view model to the view. The view will be able to observe the view model, but the view model may not reference a view. That is true, and that's consistent. But where things break down is, uh, here's my little diagram here. MVVM architecture is not a magic wand which makes your application's presentation logic disappear. And this is very true. It is not. And what you will see is you'll basically see two versions of model view view model. Um, you'll see people who prioritize reusable view models. And the Android team typically pushes that. And so the view model will just hold on to some kind of model, like a note. And it will expose that, but it won't have any details about any particular view. So that's what most people think model view view model is until they actually start to build it and see that there's a problem with this particular approach, depending on your preferences. The other way we can do model view view model is that, again, we're still maintaining that rule. We may not have an arrow which points from the view model to the view. In other words, we may not reference a view from a view model. But what we can do is we can include all of the details for every widget and every meaningful kind of data in a particular view in that view model. So that does two things. Um, it solves the problem that we see that arises in the other approach, which is that if I don't have any presentation logic in the view model, then the only thing left to do is to add a presenter or to fill your view full of logic. Filling a view full of logic, in my opinion, in general, is not a good idea because views are difficult to test. There are ways around that, but you will be setting yourself up for extra work. So we, what we lose using this approach down here is we, we lose the reusability of a view model. So if we don't include the, the presentation logic details of any particular view in a view model, this thing can be reused across multiple different views. If we take this approach down here, which I like to call a humble view control freak view model, that's just a joke. You don't have to take that too seriously, but that's the idea. Here, the view model is very, knows very intimately, that's a good word, every detail about a particular view. And for that reason, we lose the reusability of this particular view model. Why is that not a big deal? I very, very rarely need to reuse a view model. So I don't really care that I am sacrificing reusability in order to simplify the logic of the view and to keep the view as a humble object. And the way we will tie this all together is that our presenter will attempt to encapsulate almost all of the logic. So our view model will hopefully be very simple. Our view will be very simple. And our presentation logic will be a class. And this is where the clean architecture comes in. Our presentation logic will be a class, if I can find it. 
a class which possesses no framework dependencies. Um, I think that's a good general term we can use, but if you want to think like a platform or libraries, none of that. This class will be language standard library code, simple as. Um, that could be Java or Kotlin. Today we'll be learning, we'll be working in Java, but the same idea with Kotlin applies here. And so this is hopefully, if you're paying attention, this is the overarching goal. Now, some of you, it might be obvious why we do this, but for some of you, it might not be obvious. Why do we bother to have a class which possesses no framework plat or platform libraries or anything like that? No, ev only the Java standard library. It makes it super easy to test. I actually don't even really need JUnit to test this. Um, I will probably, I would still use JUnit as my single um, testing library, but I don't need Espresso. I don't need RoboElectric. Uh, I don't really, I don't need a mocking library. I could use one, but I've gotten used to not using them and that's fine. So that's really the whole goal here. And to tie this, all this together, we've got classes in particular, the view, which the thing about views is that they are always tightly coupled to frameworks. If I pull up my view, you will see that we are basically tightly coupled no matter what we do, whether we're using a fragment or we're using an activity, to the Android operating system. And this, by nature, makes it more difficult to test. You can test it, but you need to use RoboElectric. You need to use Espresso, or you need to, at bare minimum, build, build and deploy the application to a device. I don't want to have to do that. That takes time. It takes effort. Writing unit tests in pure JUnit for a pure Java class or a pure Kotlin class takes very little time. Okay, so I hope I've given everyone a general overview of what we are doing. And now I'm going to attempt to carry on building this thing because I am kind of teaching. I will try and narrate what I'm doing. So let's get started. Um, so there's a couple moving parts here. There's many moving parts. We have the, uh, what I call the publisher subscriber relationship between the view and the view model. And you can implement that using live data or RX Java, or probably I think uh, Kotlin flow. I haven't actually messed around with Kotlin flow yet, but I hear that all the time. We're gonna try and solve this problem without any of that stuff. Uh, because we don't really need this to be a multi-threaded communication. We do want the presenter to be asking the, when the presenter asks the back end for data, we do want that to be a multi-threaded thing. But just when it concerning front end data, we don't necessarily need threading, at least not unless we're dealing with a very special problem, which we're not because this is a demo. Okay. So we've got our view event. Um, and so we have for every single widget that exists and every interaction that can happen here, we have an event class. So like I showed you before, we've got some of you, um, we've got a uh, left text box, right text box, left switch, right switch, left progress bar, right progress bar. And these things will be updated by our presenter updating the view model and then by extension the view observing that data in the view model and that's sort of the flow that we're looking for so um 
this is an important aspect here and this is really something that i learned more recently is like really emphasizing um what we call what i would call event driven architecture so let's uh finish off this contract class so this is the part that i was i stopped yesterday and i was thinking about this and i've realized we need to have a function on this view model for every interaction and look i get it some of you are going to look at that and think that seems like overkill oops that's not what i wanted to do well we're just going to see about that i'm not saying it isn't i'm not saying this isn't over engineering but the purpose of this is building something complex in a simple application so that when i build a more complicated application it's an e it's easier for me to do that so we're not going to do this domain model thing. That's what I thought about initially. We're going to change this. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to have a setter for every any piece of data which represents something to do with the user interface. And this is really key. This is really important. And this is something I learned from Uncle Bob yesterday morning while rereading Clean Architecture. We may only give the view model uh, ints, um, basically primitives and strings. Uh, strings are technically not a primitive if I'm being really picky. String, int, bool, stuff like that. And that's a really key point, which we'll see. Again, the purpose of this is to keep our dependencies very clean. This is clean architecture. Okay, so Ryan, shut up and code. Set, uh, left text label so i'm looking at what's on the side here and then i'm writing a function and i do that because i have a memory of a goldfish <laughs> oh it's really raining out there now all right set left text label set right text label um let's actually just say set left switch i'll just copy that set right switch and again for those who just joined us we're talking about these widgets here um and then we've got uh set oops left progress set right progress and then we need the appropriate data so a text label is going to get a string Normally I would give it some long name, but we're going to keep things pretty concise here. Uh, string S again. Our switch is modeled from a, by a Boolean. Or Boolean, depending on how you prefer to pronounce that. And then we have an int for the progress bar. All right, cool. All right, so we've got that done. Uh, and then we will set up that view model. And then we can kind of get into the more important part. Actually, let me just do a bit of work here first. So our logic class, this is a presenter effectively, is going to have a, um, a reference to our view model. Now, specifically, we're gonna refer to it through the uh, interface, not the concrete class, and that's very important. And it's also gonna have a view, and again, same idea. And while I'm here, let's just build a constructor. Um, we're not gonna worry about storage. We're just gonna, let's make a stub. Uh, we'll say, um, I'll just create a stub interface so that we get the idea, but uh, yeah, so interface, I storage mechanism or service. It's some backend thing. <laughs> That's all it is. Um, and maybe we'll just add in void get data. I don't actually plan to implement this thing, but yeah. 
All right. And now we're going to create a, um, a constructor. Uh, I'll skip the storage mechanism. I don't even care. Normally I would pass that in, but at this point we're just doing a demo. Okay, we've got that started here. Now the next thing we're going to look at is the... Um, uh, Rafael asks uh, if I speak other languages. Uh, ich spreche ein bisschen Deutsch. Uh, et, uh, je parle un petit français. But I am fluent in neither of those languages. All right. So, um, all right. So, what we're going to do is let's build that view model next. Just clear some windows out here. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Um, where is my view model? I'm sure I built one. I guess I didn't build one. What an idiot. All right, we'll make it now. Uh, so that's going to implement our interface, obviously. And then we'll implement the methods. Now this thing's going to implement another interface, and this is what we can look at next, which is that, um, so I'm sure almost all of you have worked with Rx Java or um, some kind of publisher subscriber pattern. Live data fits into that. Um, anyone who's done Android, you've probably used either Rx Java or Live Data at some point. Um, again, this is a clean architecture GUI. So I'm not allowed to use any of those. I do, I'm choosing not to. And instead what I'm doing is I am implementing my own version effectively of a simplified version of Rx Java or Live Data or whatever. It's not going to have the same features, but I don't need the same features. I don't need a giant library to do to model one single um, synchronous interaction between a view and a view model. That's overkill. Um, I'll just address the comments for a moment. Uh, you might want to, Rafael, or I'm not sure if you're Brazilian or Spanish, but, uh, um, or Portuguese, I should say, as well. Um, but I do have a lot of videos. I think I have a video dedicated to the repository pattern, so you might want to check my channel out, because I do talk about that pretty frequently um, in the, uh, I also have a video where I build a uh, the closest thing to a clean architecture I could get using Jetpack libraries like Room. So you might want to, I have a giant video tutorial on that particular topic. Anyways, uh, it's lit literally like four hours long or something, but I have timestamps so you can find the particular part of the video you want. Oh, it is really raining. Okay, so we're gonna, we have this publisher subscriber thing and it has four generic or four methods. So we have update string, update int, update bool, and these are really the only primitives that I'll be worrying about. And the reason why I chose those specifically, A, because they're primitives, but B, because this is capable of modeling anything we have on the user interface. So again, let's pull up that user interface. And it's not going to help me out there activity so yeah we can model a label as a string we can model a switch as a boolean we can model a progress bar as an integer so that's kind of the idea there in case you were wondering so that's what we're doing here and this class will actually represent this relationship publisher subscriber this eyeball means an observer but i prefer to use the um 
I prefer to call it a publisher subscriber pattern in, instead of the observer pattern, even though they effectively are I, basically the same thing. I'm sorry, uh, Rafael, I, I do not understand Portuguese at all. I'll try to watch uh, Paulo Costa versus, uh, I think, Israel Adesanya is happening later. Paul is an awesome dude. I don't know if you watch MMA, but just throwing that out there. So uh, we also have this method. So um, this is a use with caution here because now when we're doing a publisher subscriber, um, generally you would want to do, um, you would want to have a generic here for this object. Otherwise you're losing type safety. So this is kind of just an emergency in case for some reason I need to share some data uh, from the view model to the view um, and I can't represent that data as either a Boolean, an integer, or a string. But again, we have to be careful using objects, cause, especially in Java, because obviously if I cast that to the wrong thing, then on the other side it's going to cause problems. And I wouldn't do that at all if I was working in a team, because this is basically like setting up your team members for bugs if you're not careful how you do this. So we've got our uh, publisher, and then we also have a subscriber. And for the moment, I have this nested, but I might change that. The reason why I have it nested is the generic. So, um, and then you'll see that the... Uh, so this is how we send the data. We call update boolean. And um, this class has a list of subscribers. You should be, again, familiar with this if you ever worked with Rx Java. This is like a list of observers. And then what will happen is that we iterate through for each subscriber in subscribers, we update, we send it the data. This really is basically a simplified version of Rx Java. Um, I get asked about that all the time. Can I make a video on Rx Java? I guess in a way I am right now. Although again, Rx Java has a lot more features to it. It's got threading and other stuff. Uh, okay and functional style programming, which is cool. Okay, so what we're gonna do after all that rambling, we're going to make our view model the publisher because that's its role. So we're gonna say uh, publisher. And for the event, um, we're, we're going to use this same event enum. Um, interesting sidebar, I realized yesterday enums are actually basically a form of DSL, a domain specific language, if you really think about it. That's actually kind of what they are. Um, at least that's how I'm kind of using them. And they're also a domain specific set of types, which is really kind of neat. So um, yeah, so we're going to give it that update view event. And uh, this thing should complain. Um, Okay, so interface. Oh, it's, uh, sorry, it's an abstract class, duh. I'm so used to working with uh, interfaces. Okay, and we've already um, implemented the uh, functions here, as you can see. And so this is where things are gonna get interesting. So I need to do a couple things. When this application, or this feature, I should say, starts, I need the presenter to grab a reference to the view and to give that to the view model and then add that to the view model's list of subscribers. Let me just drink some coffee. Okay, so what we're going to do, we'll need a set subscriber. So we're going to say public, um, we'll say public void. Maybe this should actually be in the abstract class. Now that I think of it, that's probably a better way to do this. Um, yeah, let's do that in the abstract class. I don't see why I would do that in the, uh... oh no, no, that might not work. 
because the um, the presenter won't know it as a publisher. It'll know it as uh, my view model interface. So I don't think I can actually do that there. Let's not do that. Um, let's say we'll give it just a public function. I have to do the function in the interface. Let's do it that way. This is live coding, folks. All right, public uh, void set observer. No, uh, let's use the other terminology, set subscriber. I apologize that I'm using different terminology there, but I wasn't the one who decided to basically use 10 different ways of explaining the one concept. Observer, observable, publisher, subscriber, and all the other ways that we describe the same pattern. Um, so this is going to have a subscriber and we'll give it the event. This looks a little ugly. I might, I don't know how to, I'm trying to think of a good way to actually decouple or to name this. Cause I do want these things nested so that they get the same generic, but at the same time having to type publisher dot subscriber, that looks a little weird, but we're, I'll worry about that now. That's more of an aesthetic concern at the moment. Um, Maybe let's do, uh, uh, so that'll be our view event, update view event. We'll call that sub, I don't really care. And that should do. Um, and then I think I should probably have a, uh, just for the hell of it, let's just say clear. And this will just tell our view model to um, just unsubscribe all subscribers. Um, this would be equivalent to like RxJava's observe or uh, what was that thing? Uh, clear, um, subscriber list dot clear. I, I forget how to implement uh, RxJava because I haven't done it in two years. <laughs> all right, so let's, uh, we'll add that stuff in. I think that was in the view contract. Okay. So set subscriber, we get this thing in. And then what we do is we say um, subscribers, which again, that comes from our abstract class dot add. And then we pass in sub. And I sure hope that works. Looks like it does. Um, then we have for clear subscribers dot uh, clear, I guess, removes all elements, so that's cool. All right, so we're getting this wiring put together. And so this will be the interesting part now. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to actually implement this interaction here now that we've got our base classes. Let's add the, the subscriber interface to our view. So let, we'll say um, implements uh, publisher uh, view update view event. I realize it's pretty hard for you guys to see, so I'll try and fix that. Um, dot subscriber. How do I even do that? Do we do it this way, I think? Or do I have to do the generic twice? I guess we'll know in a moment here. Okay, that works good. I was worried I had to do the um, generic parameter here as well, which would just look so ugly, but luckily I don't have to. Hey, what's up, brother Omar? Marhaban. How are you doing, Omar? Uh, I recall you were uh, studying. JavaScript, <laughs> that horrible language. Okay, um, cool, we got this going. And then these are, this is when we will actually, while I'm here, let's just implement this part. So here's the cool part. Um, and this is why we have the, the enum here. So for this particular case, I might set up a switch statement, but since there's only ever gonna be 
we're only ever going to be either updating a left widget or a right widget. We can just use an if. So if e dot um, uh, I got to think of if e equals update view event dot uh, so we're looking at the um, text views, so update left text label. Then we will say text widget left dot set text s. And then we'll have an else. So here's the thing. If I had multiple different kinds of views, I would have a switch statement here and we would do it that way. Uh, but we're doing this a little bit differently. Um, since there's only two, we only have the uh, if else statement, and that's perfectly fine. I'll just make sure I write this correctly. And all of this here is to simplify everything as much as possible. Um, yeah, we do have some very rudimentary logic in our view, but we're making that logic easier to write by using what is effectively a DSL, a domain-specific language, and we're implementing that domain-specific language using enums or in Kotlin I would probably use sealed classes in case anyone's wondering. Okay uh, then we've got on update int so now what we're gonna do is this would either be update um, progress bar left and uh, what did I call that thing progress bar widget I'm an idiot. <laughs> Let's do left instead. And I actually forget, is it set progress? Um, I don't even remember. Set progress, okay. And then we give it uh, I, and then that's good to go. I'll just hit control D, we'll delete this, and do else. And we'll make sure we have the right progress bar. Okay, we're almost done. <laughs> yep. Uh, Omar says um, uh, that studying JavaScript will make him mad. Yeah, I hear that quite frequently from people who work in JavaScript. Um, you you probably know this, Omar, but TypeScript. I don't know, probably they won't let you use that since you're in a study program, but TypeScript is way better. It, it introduces type safety. Anyways, so, uh, all right, so now we're doing the uh, switches. So we'll say update left switch. Um, and then set uh, checked is our function, okay. And we'll just add that in there. And I'm just going to double check that I didn't make a clerical error because I make a lot of clerical errors. Uh, funny story, in mathematics, I've never failed a class in my life in mathematics, but I've also never gotten 100%, uh, I think, on any test in mathematics, except for like maybe some really simple ones in you know grade two. But by the time I got to high school, and the reason why is that I have no problem understanding mathematics, but I always make little arithmetic and clerical errors. So, yeah. Anyways. This, uh, this lighting looks weird. <laughs> All right. So, um, and then we've got this extra one here, but I'm not going to use this, and this would be an important thing. If I was working on a team, I probably wouldn't even include this. In fact, I'm going to make a note about this. This method exists only to demonstrate how we could send some kind of arbitrary object to our view if necessary, but understand that we lose type safety in doing so, which means to say that when this thing comes in here, 
if I'm working on this part of the view and say my coworker is working on the class which will be calling this particular method, I need to know 100% what he's sending me. Because um, if I cast it to, uh, I don't know, a HTTP URL connection and it's actually a string, then obviously that's going to throw a class cast, class cast exception, which is not good. So, but I just wanted to throw that in there in case anyone was wondering how would we do that. All right, so we've got that basically working here. Um, why is it, oh, it's complaining about using switch compat and that stuff, I don't really care. <laughs> All right. Let's finish off the view model now. So for those who have just joined, what I am building is this thing here. And at the moment we are modeling the interaction where the view observes the view model. And we're doing that without any third party libraries because this is clean architecture. Now I'm not saying that clean architecture states that you must not use any third party libraries or frameworks, but it does tell you that you may only use them in the how I would describe it is you only you may only use it in the extremes of your application's architecture. At the very end, we have the view, which must talk to the Android operating system or, or the servlet or the JSP or whatever the hell you're using. And then um, at the other end, we have the thing which must talk to the database. Those things are allowed to have frameworks, but this presentation logic, the thing in between, and also this view model, no frameworks, no sir. Yeah, I know, uh, Omar comments, there's no casting in J JavaScript. It's, uh, it's a nightmare. Okay, so this is going to be the, an interesting part, an interesting problem that we need to solve now. So we've got the view basically wired up. In fact, I, I don't think there's anything else to do here. Um, it will need to talk to the logic class so we can add a reference in private um, base view logic. And again, we're going to have that, uh, now we're not gonna use update view event there. We're not gonna do that. Is that what I did before? Yeah, we're not gonna do that. We need a different enum for that. So this update view enum models the interactions between the uh, view model and the view, but we need another enum. And I, I'm sure people are watching this thinking, I am insane by using enums all the time, but I don't think so. Um, we need an enum to describe whatever the user clicks on or interacts with um, in order to relay that event to the presentation logic. So I'm going to do something really crazy here. That was a joke, but I'm going to add in a button so that I can have just one single user interaction. Um, we'll call that button fire event, not fire vent. Um, we will say uh, fire event equals find view by ID r.id.btn fire event. And then we'll hop into our user interface and build that. Uh, hey, what's up, Jamie? How's it going? Okay, so let's just go ahead and add in the, uh, just a button so that I can model some kind of, um, event here. So, uh, let's get our palette out and then button. And the button, oh, it almost disappeared. And I'm just gonna tack that down to the bottom of the uh, parent here. Let's just copy paste that in. And so we'll say, um, instead of doing constraint top to bottom of, we're gonna do constraint bottom to bottom of parent. 
You know, I do love the constraint layout. It's one thing uh, that I would not go without as much as I've been rambling about how I don't like to use third-party libraries, or sorry, uh, frameworks, I should say. That's not true. I do like to use them in where they should be used. I just don't really like to have them all over the application. Okay, we're going to do that, and then I'll just give it a margin bottom just so it's not so friggin' ugly down there. Let's just... Uh, um, Let's do 64. All right, and we'll just give it a bit of text. And uh, BTN, um, what did I call it? Fire event, I think. Let's just double check that. Yep. And okay, that's all I really need to do there. We will set up a, a listener. Set on click listener, I believe. And we'll use a lambda for that. And uh, so here's, so we need to make our um, enum here. So I'm wondering, where should I make this enum? Should I make it right in the fragment, right in the view? I don't think that's a terrible idea. I could pull it out into a separate class, but I'm, I'm wondering, do I need to do that? Um, let's start by making it in the view, and I might change my mind later. So we're just going to say it's going to have to be public. So public enum. Um, for well, for now it can be package private. Actually, come to think of it. Um, okay, so enum. Uh, now, what do I want to call this? So we have our update view events, and again, that models these interactions here, and we want to model this interaction. So update view event, and then we can say um, let's call this view. You know me, I like long and verbose names because I, I don't like to have to guess about what anything means in my code. Um, cause I rarely remember <laughs> that's the honest truth there. Um, okay. Uh, view interaction event, let's call it that. And we're only going to have one interaction here. So we'll say, uh, um, you know what I, I, here's just a quick tangent that's related to what I'm doing right now. You know what I love about Kotlin? is that I can have a Kotlin file called iViewContract and I could define these event classes in this one file and then centralize them. But because I'm working in Java, we can't do that. So, uh, but we're gonna say on button click. Um, and we're just gonna model one interaction, but obviously this would apply. We could model the interactions when the user clicks on a, a switch Maybe I should do that. Let's let's model the switches too. Um, on button click, on left switch toggle. Since I'm putting all this effort into what is effectively a demo application, might as well uh, do it right. If you're gonna do it, do it right. Do or do not, there is no try. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to give that to our view interaction, our base view logic. And then I'll need to change the base view logic itself. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Here we go. And let's just update that too. Import it. And this is why putting it in the view probably wasn't a good idea, but whatever. Um, you know, this is going to bug me. <laughs> Let's make a separate class or a separate file. It's just too ugly for me. And I literally just said, if you're going to do it, do it right. So let's, uh, let's not screw around here. Okay. There. Um, so I've got our logic class. 
now, um, so because the because I'm using an, an activity here, this will have to be where I create the logic class. If I was using a fragment, I wouldn't do that, but we're just going to uh, pretend that that's not a thing. Let's just make a little helper function here in it, or we'll say initialize. And so we'll say um, logic, that's not what I wanted. Logic equals new um, logic. Um, for the view, we'll give this. And for the view model, we'll say um, new. Wow, I'm epically failing with commas. In fairness, the IDE is making it harder than it should be. New view model. Um, now, why is it complaining? I need to extend the interface. Is that what it's complaining about? Yes, I do. Implements I view contract dot view, and we'll implement those methods. Uh, yep. Okay. Cool. So, so we create that thing. That thing's good to go. Um, we'll set up our interactions. So when the user hits the fire button, we'll say dot on view event. Um, and then we'll say on button click will be our event. Um, now, do I need any data? I base view logic. Okay, so this is an interesting case here. Um, I might not be able to get away with just using an enum. In fact, I'm not going to be able to get away with just using an enum. So let's say um, update view. You know, um, I've never, uh, I haven't actually tried does Java even allow me to nest an enum in an interface? Huh. I didn't know that actually worked. I still wonder if it does. I, I gotta look that up now. Nested enum in interface Java. Oh, you actually can do that. I actually assumed you couldn't. So that's an interesting little point that might be useful later on. I could move the um, I could move the update view event in there. So let's do that. I don't think I'll have this one in there, but I can do that. We'll delete. Uh, where is update view event? Yeah, we'll just delete that, and then obviously I'll have to fix it. Um, so view model. We'll just do that. Now again, that's going to make things like these names really long, but in this particular case, that doesn't bother me. Um, and then we have our view class somewhere in this heap of tabs. Okay. Um, here we go. All right, yeah, just import that. When copy paste is faster than just having the IDE do it. Okay. Cool. Um, okay, so next, uh, did I make my, did I actually make that event class, view interaction event? Yes, I did. Okay, so. Um, now I need to turn that into an actual class here. We're not going to be able to get away with just using an enum. So let's say class um, view interaction. Um, we'll rename this thing just to event. 
and then we'll give it a payload. So private, uh, this will be the event. So this will be just like I do in the other application that I, I've been building lately. Um, we'll have an event, um, we'll just call it E, and then we'll have private, um, and this should be final. Um, private final uh, object, and we'll just call this value, and we'll make our constructor and then we'll make some getters. I'm hitting alt enter in case, or alt insert in case anyone's wondering. Okay, uh, let's call that get event. Okay, so we've got that. And then we'll do uh, view interaction, I think dot event. Yep. I'll probably need to do that elsewhere. I'm pretty good at writing this Java stuff, eh? <laughs> All right. I would hope so after like nearly seven years of writing Java. Although in fairness, I wasn't exactly writing Java the entire time. Okay, so uh, here we're just gonna give null. I don't really care. Um, why is it complaining? Uh, I didn't do new for starters. New view interaction. Now, um, I should point out that I would give this a more specific name if there was more features in this application. I'm just giving it a generic name here, but yeah, just bear that in mind. So required type event. Um, so I think, does that mean I need to Yeah, it, needs, it means I need to do that instead, actually. Which is hilarious, because I was just bragging about how good at Java I was. Okay. <laughs> so it's still complaining logic.onView event. So it expects... Oh, I don't think I upgraded, updated the... No, that's fine. It's still expecting an event, which is the problem. So, oh, I didn't fix it here. That's why it's complaining. Okay, that should fix it. Keyword should fix it. Uh, where else did I screw this up? View interaction. I don't know why it's still expecting an event. On view event. Um, I've, I have the correct, event E value, so that part I think is fine. Um, It's expecting a view interaction, so that's fine. I'm creating one. Oh, is it complaining about Lambda support? Oh, that's why it's complaining, I think. Okay, so it's not a code problem. Okay, let's, uh, let's have Android Studio fix that. Okay, cool. I needed to uh, fix that anyway, so that's good. Okay, so that's now working. Um, all right, folks, that part is basically done. Um, there's one more thing we need to do, uh, or there's a couple things actually. Okay, so set view model. 
Um, so this is where we actually observe the view model. So I'll have to think critically about how I do that. So we get passed in our view model. Um, and I think I need to say vm dot, uh, how do I actually do this? Okay. So we have our publisher. And then we need to observe it based on my own implementation. So let's look at the publisher implementation. So a publisher will have, okay, I, hmm. Do I actually need to do that? I don't think I need the view to have a reference to the view model. I just need to, yeah, I don't think I need to do that. We'll see. Um, Cause all I do is I pass the view through an interface into the view model and attach it from there. So I don't think I need set view model. We'll, we'll see. Apparently I don't need many functions in the view at all. We'll see about that. Okay. So the other thing I was gonna do is let's just add some listeners to our uh, uh, switches. So we'll say dot set on click listener. Um, I'll just copy this in. And we're gonna use lambdas of course. So this is on left switch toggle and we give the Boolean value. So we say view dot is checked, I believe. Uh, so we need to cast it to a switch. Um, I think uh, it's like get checked or is checked. Get is okay I guess I just don't remember what it is does anybody remember what the getting a the state of the switch is I thought it was get checked but I'm apparently wrong about that um Where the hell is it? All right, I gotta, um, I gotta use the Google. <laughs> okay, get state from Android switch. is checked. Oh, okay, I was really close. It's is checked. All right, I guess I just wasn't used to that particular naming convention. All right, cool, whatever. Um, let's just copy and paste this whole frickin' thing and add it to the uh, right checkbox. And then obviously update the enum. And we're good to go. Okay, I think for real this time, the uh, view is actually implemented. Um, yeah, good enough for now. Um, let's take a look at the logic class. So I think what we're gonna do, we're gonna make a fake. We'll make some fake data. So let's do, uh, we'll call this fake storage. Um, and that'll implement our uh, 
I storage mechanism or device. Obviously, that's just an example. So uh, this class simulates <laughs> simulates a I/O device like a network adapter, database, or system service. Okay. And uh, we're just going to say get data. That'll need to return some data. Uh, what do I want to return? Um, I don't particularly care. Maybe our domain model. Yeah, let's return a... We'll return two domain models. That seems reasonable. Just to make it simple, we use an array. Um, why is it complaining? Oh, because we're overriding from an interface. That's why it's complaining. So again, domain model, it's just a generic plain old Java object in case you're wondering, that's all it is. And this is supposed to simulate something you would be downloading from a, or uh, loading from a network adapter or a database or something like that. And we're just gonna make some uh, dummy data here. Uh, so we'll say um, domain model array uh, DM equals new domain model array to element size. We'll say DM zero equals new domain model. I don't think I implemented any kind of constructor here. So let's just, just to keep some consistency, private final. And we'll add our constructor in. And uh, yep, so we'll just give it some dummy data here. So what do we got? We got a text. Um, this is Sparta. Let's do that. I don't know where that came from, but let's just not even ask. <laughs> uh, oops. Okay, next we have on or off. Let's do false here. I don't really care. And progress will say... I don't know, if we're yelling this is Sparta, then we're probably at 99%. And uh, let's do another one. Uh, someone asks, um, uh, that's a great name. Poop asks, are, am I using exclusively Java or Kotlin? Um, I don't use either exclusively. Uh, I do prefer to code in Kotlin, but I also am basically a senior Java developer, so I am really good with Java. Um, I will s switch back to using Kotlin soon, but I had a couple of projects I had to work on which demanded Java specifically. So I kind of just got used to using Java again and then remembering how terrible it is. Um, but, you know, in fairness, Java is actually a much better language than people. Uh, the JVM is really a spectacular invention, in fairness. Okay, so for the second domain model, we're going to say, let's type something in Russian. Um, let's say, uh, oi, uh, Blin, if I can even spell that properly. Uh, was that Blin? I think I screwed up that vowel, but whatever. Good enough. Ich weiß es nicht. Okay, uh, we'll do true here. Oops, I'm still typing in Cyrillic. And we'll do... Uh, Let's do, I think our blends, uh, we just threw them on the stove, so let's give them a progress of 10. And if you're wondering what the hell I'm talking about, then uh, it never made sense to begin with. <laughs> okay. This is just fake data. It doesn't matter. Okay, so we return that from storage. Let's add one more view interaction. 
um, we'll say on start. And this will signal to the, the presenter that the uh, things have begun. Um, we want to, where's our view? Um, so we'll have on create and then we'll in on start is where we'll tell the logic class. So we'll do uh, override on, um, yeah, on start makes sense. I'm just wondering if I should do on resume. I think on start should be good. So we'll say logic class dot on view event, new view event. What did I call this thing? View interaction. And then we'll give it uh, on start and a big fat null because it doesn't matter. And then we hop into our logic class and then you've seen this before if you've ever watched my stuff. Um, so we'll say switch event and then we select, uh, why is it complaining? Oh, I need to get the, uh, so we need to do dot get event. Um, so let's call this interaction, make this slightly more legible. Okay. And then we'll say case on start break. And we'll just copy that for each one of these. Format it. Okay, so on button click, on left switch, on right switch. So, um, you know, we've got a, a few people watching and I wanna take a break here and talk about something. I know some of you watching this are beginners or intermediates and you see me throwing together interfaces, abstract classes, using enums, using a lot of pretty advanced patterns for practical Java. And I want you all to understand, I've been doing this for years and it takes a long time to be capable of building these kinds of applications. Now, I get crap from my very kind viewers for never advertising. So I just wanna suggest down in the description box below, if you wanna learn how to do all this stuff I'm showing you in the context of a roughly two hour course where I introduce everything from some fundamentals of computer science that will help you become a better Java or Kotlin developer to a very clear and simple explanation of when to use interfaces, abstract classes, uh, what software architecture is, how to apply it at the level of functions, at the level of classes, like you see me doing here. If you want to learn those things, uh, I've got some courses down below. You can check them out on Udemy or Skillshare, and I'm looking at uploading them to uh, YouTube as well eventually. But yeah, I just thought I would mention that, but also I just wanted to say, if you see me flying through this, I've got a lot of years of working with Java and Android, so you got to keep working at it. And uh, thank you for watching Poop. I will hope to see you tomorrow during my uh, um, live stream Q&A. Uh, there's a question here. Um, do I have any recommendations for um, digesting my channel? Uh, you s certainly have a running theme of poop and digestion. Um, if anyone's wondering what I'm talking about, that's the name of one of the viewers who's asking a good question. Um, to be honest, I would have to ask you, uh, what are you looking at Java or Kotlin? Um, I have obviously hundreds of videos. Um, probably you'll want to look at my full length courses. They generally have timestamps. So even though they're like four hour videos, you'll be able to go to the part you want. And uh, yeah, um, I don't have as much Java Android content, but I do have a couple Java courses, which will teach you what you see here, it's just the only differences we'll be using um, Java FX, which is a front end library for desktop instead of um, Android. But uh, yeah, probably start with my full length courses and tomorrow at 9 a.m. I will be doing a, an actual Q and A session. So that's a good time to uh, check out uh, or come and ask questions if you're a beginner because that's the whole purpose. Okay, so, um,
Okay, so when on start occurs, we're going to ask for the data. So we'll say uh, on start. I like to just jump straight into a helper function, otherwise these things get pretty large and ridiculous. Ah, uh, you know what, actually, no, we need to do that, never mind, let's do that. Okay, so non start, we're gonna say storage dot, uh, we'll say, so domain model equals, uh, that'll be an array. Um, storage dot get data. And then we'll again, we'll just unpack this. So DM, uh, we'll say, okay, so this is gonna be the interesting part here. So for the purposes of demonstration, assume uh, DM zero is left and, or I think I can do that on one line. Um, it'll just be tough to read for you guys, but you get the idea. Okay, so DM1 is right. So we'll ask first for left, we'll say zero, and then we'll say, um, let's make that a variable, so domain model left equals that, uh, right equals the other one. And then we'll say, now what we're doing is we need to format this text and give it to the view. And that's the responsibility of the presenter. Give it to the view model, excuse me. So we say view model. Why don't I have a view model? Oh, VM is what I called it, okay. VM dot, okay, so we'll start with the left. Uh, which one? Did I already do that? No, nope, that's good. Okay. So progress, we'll say um, left dot... Uh, did I forget to write getters? I, I think I did. Let's pull up that domain model. Yep, I forgot to add getters. Okay, let's do that. So alt insert getters. Boom, done. And where did my logic class go? All right, left dot uh, get progress, left dot get text. Oops, that should be get. Uh, why don't I have a getter for the Boolean? Is on or off? Okay, fair enough. left dot get uh, text. Okay, cool. Uh, we'll just copy paste that, do the same thing for right. Write text. Okay, cool. Now the whole idea here um, is that we wanna do that and then um, the idea is that the presentation logic actually formats the data before it even hits the view model. The reason for that is again, our overarching goal here is to concentrate as much of the presentation logic in the class, which is called presenter because it's full of presentation logic. We don't want the view to have any extra unnecessary logic same thing for the view. We want to keep those things as humble as possible. That's called the humble object pattern. Uncle Bob, Robert C. Martin is a big proponent of it. Uh, and same with Martin Fowler. He calls it passive view and various other things. Okay, so we update the data. And I think that's it uh, for this. So the idea here is by updating the view model, we are indirectly updating the view. What I used to do is I would update the view model in the presenter, and then I would make the same calls usually to the view. And I didn't like that. It seemed redundant. Um, okay, let's look at finishing off our view model now, and this is really important. Okay, so... Um, So what we need to do 
is that every time the we update something here, um, we need to propagate that update into the view. Now, I have two ways I can do this. I can have a field, a member variable, for every widget. Or I could do it more functional, and I'm open to input if uh, anyone has suggestions. I could also probably do it in a more functional style where we basically just skip the, um, we basically just skip the fields. Let's start with fields and then I'll see if that becomes an approach which isn't as viable. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it might become a little more obvious later. Um, I'm just gonna move these uh, subscriber functions down here because we're not really gonna look at them again. Um, I kind of feel like I should, okay, I'm just gonna, sh I'm gonna shut up and write some code here. Uh, you know, it's a view model, we'll, we'll include fields. So we'll say private um, string. Now here's a key principle. We're only allowed to use strings, booleans, or integers, or primitive platform types here. Um, and that's key so that whatever the presenter sends in here, it's gotta be formatted in either a primitive or a string uh, reference variable. So this one will be string uh, left text. Uh, this will be right text. We'll have, um, and they won't be final. Um, private, uh, this will be an integer for the progress. Pro, uh, left progress. Using the progress bars was a bit of a silly decision because we're not necessarily going to be like dynamically, I don't know, I could rig something up where we're dynamically updating them. That might be kind of fun, but I don't think I'll do that today. Um, and then we have our uh, switches. Left switch. Right switch, okay. Okay, so every time one of these things gets updated, we need to update the field, and then we also need to notify our subscribers. Um, and I'm, I have to experiment, because I, I haven't actually implemented this the observer pattern in this way before. So let's do, um, first we'll update the field, so set left text label, so we'll say uh, left text equals s, so let's sort out that part first. Write text equals S and so on. B, yep. Uh, okay, come on brain, you can do this. Um, this will be the progress bar, left progress is I. Okay, cool. Um, and then we need to figure out how we're going to actually implement the updates. So let me just clear a bunch of windows here and we'll sort this out. So the way that the, uh, the observer pattern and RxJava and all these things work is that um, we, we establish this publisher subscriber pattern and the way that we do that is we use interfaces or abstract classes to hide the concrete class names, but we indirectly have the view model, in this case, possessing a reference to the view. It's important that it's an indirect reference. The view model may not reference the concrete class of this particular view. Um, okay, so 
we've got these update functions. I've got to remember how to do this properly. So we call one of these functions and that will in turn notify the, any subscribers of an update. So we'll call, I don't think these, can these be private? Uh, they need to be protected. Private wouldn't work. Okay, cool. Uh, so we're gonna do that and then we will say um, update, uh, this will be an update string. And I can either do left text or I can do S. Is there any meaningful difference? For legibility, oh, so here's a key thing. I need to include the event as well. So for the event, we'll say, um, what do I call this thing? Uh, update view event, I think. And this will be update left text label, okay. And then we'll just give it, uh, whatever, let's just do left text. I could have used S, but I can't actually think if there's any reason to prefer any approach over the other. And this might be slightly more legible. I don't know. Uh, we'll do the same thing for the rest of these functions. And hopefully by the end of this, we'll actually get to test this thing out and see if it works at all. Assuming my computer can handle that. Got to make sure we get the right enum. Um, okay, cool. Let's, uh, let's keep going. Let's keep this train wreck moving. Update left switch. Uh, why is it complaining? It's expecting a string. Oh, because I called update string, update boolean. Oh, that didn't work at all. Okay. Okay, update right. We're getting there, folks. Almost done. Okay, and then update int. Uno más, señores y señoritas. Orale. You know what really sucks? Like knowing bits and pieces of about five different languages, but only being fluent in one. <laughs> That's basically me in a nutshell. Okay, so this is a progress bar. Update right progress bar. Okay, again, I'm just gonna double check everything here because um, I make clerical errors. Okay, left text, left text, left, left text, good. Update string, right, right, right. Left, left, left. Right, right, right. Left, left, left. Right, right, right. So it looks like I did it. Despite my best efforts, it looks like I succeeded. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know if there's anything left to do. So I, I need to make sure that we call set subscriber in on start. So let's let's do that. We'll go back to our logic class. Um so the first thing I'll, I'll let's just add that in right away. In on start, we say um, view model vm dot set subscriber, and we'll pass in our view. I'll probably have to cast that to a uh, publisher, or no, a subscriber rather. Okay. So now we're wired up. That's what we wanted. Let me 
and just format this. Oh, this is annoying. Good old Java syntax. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so we, we wire that up. Um, let's look at our activity. Uh, I would prefer to hide the... Well, let's, you know what, let's do a dependency injection. Uh, we'll call this build logic. Um, okay, so uh, herp de derp class build logic. It'll have a st static function, public static void build, or I could use inject, but let's just use build because that actually describes what we're doing. That'll accept a, um, a view. Um, yeah, we only need to pass in our view, which will be our contract, iViewContract.View. And then we can build the, where's that code? Um, so we're taking the code from our init here and we're actually just um, having our injector manage that so that we're hiding the dependencies from this uh, class here. So we're going to say, um, so this will need to return our logic class, base view logic, with our appropriate uh, generic type here, which is uh, view interaction. And then we're going to say return new logic with the view model and the view. Why is it complaining? Return outside method. Uh, am I missing a bracket? I don't get why it's complaining right now. It looks like I screwed some public static base view logic. Oh, I didn't give the name to this function. I somehow deleted that. I don't remember deleting that, but okay. All right, good. Um, okay, so then in here in the fragment, we'll call um, build logic dot build this. And then we need to say our logic class equals um, that now I think that's okay we build it and then down here in on start we actually tell things to get moving so I think that's all right okay uh, if I'm not mistaken we can now test this sample that I just built so let's uh, consider doing that um, yeah let's test it out I almost always make some little clerical errors, but uh, this might work. Okay, let's uh, let's have a go. So when I deploy this thing and build it and all that stuff, Android Studio is going to take up the vast majority of my CPU. Um, you know, I'm just going to save this image for now. I'll probably mess with that later. Uh, Okay, it's gonna close any program that I don't need. Because my computer is about to <laughs> slow down. Okay, so uh, we're gonna open up an emulator and then we'll deploy it to that emulator. And uh, the stream's gonna get really choppy for a moment and then we'll just play around and see what happens.
Okay. So it says install. It was installed successfully, but it's not running. So maybe I need to turn it on. There we go. Uh, actually, no, that's not what I want. Uh, maybe the app crashed. That might be why. Oops. Did it crash? Is what I want to know. Yes, it did. Uh, did I forget to add that to the manifest? Or what's it saying here? So... Attempt to invoke interface. So we're adding an object on a null. Okay, just show me the friggin' code. Where did we... Uh... Okay, so subscribers was null. So I probably should fix that. That'll be in the um, publisher. Um, so we have a list, so I can just say, I think, new list, uh, array list, I guess it would have to be. All right, so that should fix that crash. We'll try again. Okay, another crash, that's all right. Uh, so this time, another null pointer exception. So I guess we didn't create our storage mechanism. I think that's what's going on there. So, um, and that actually makes sense because I changed my mind as I was building this thing. So let's go back to, um, by the way, if you're wondering what that background noises it's the sound of rain hitting my roof so let's uh add that in all right that'll fix that crash let's uh try again Oh, great, a build failed. What did I do? Oh, uh, let's just say new storage, fake storage. Hey, we're working. Um, these are supposed to be determinate, so let's just, uh, I thought I specified that. Not that it really matters, but why are these showing up? I thought I specifically made them indeterminate equals false. So did I misinterpret what that means, or am I crazy here? It's not supposed to be indeterminate. It's supposed to be determinate. So why is it showing up as a... Uh, I must be confusing myself here. Well, whatever. I, I'm not going to piss around with this too much. Okay. Indeterminate equals false would imply that it's a determinate progress bar. Um, I don't know why it would then show up as a de determinate or indeterminate, but I guess I don't really care. Okay. Um, yeah, whatever. That's really stupid though. Sorry, I got to fix this problem because it, this is a, you know, some of the, my least favorite thing to do, to be perfectly honest, as a programmer, is writing annoying user interface code. Because it you end up running into problems that just don't make logical sense all the time. Sometimes your design editor is bugging out. Sometimes you need to restart and invalidate caches. Sometimes you can tell the view, hey, you're supposed to be determinate. And then it shows up as indeterminate. So... 
not a big fan of UI coding, but you know what? It's something if you want to be an individual developer, you've got to do it. So let's do um, uh, Android. Maybe I need to make it horizontal. Is that what it is? I feel like there's some setting. Uh, Android progress bar style. Um, wow, that doesn't really help me at all. Let's look at the progress bar documentation. Or maybe someone in the chat knows why it won't show up properly here. Okay. Also, uh, someone asked, um, do I, uh, um, do I prefer to write in Java? No, I prefer to write in Kotlin, but I'm not really dogmatic about which languages I use. I don't really care that much. Well, it's a, I am defining a uh, starting progress value, uh, but I do appreciate the input uh, there, respect tech. So first, let's add this in. I'm not even sure if I have that library. OK. Ah, I don't know why I put it there. Let's uh, put it at the top. OK. So at least they're uh, horizontal now. God, they look ugly from this preview. Um, and I'll try uh, what you said there, uh, respect tech. Let's set the progress to zero at first. I do set it in on start uh, programmatically, but uh, let's do, unless I have a bug. Progress will start at zero. Okay, let's, uh, let's just give a quick try of that. Okay, cool. So, um, let's make this, uh, all right, I'm gonna, I'm only gonna be live for a couple minutes, but while we've got this thing working, let's do just a slightly better job. So I'm gonna click on this fire event thing and we'll make that uh, 32 dip margin so it's not squeezed up against those buttons. Um, let's look at our fake storage. We're gonna set up a random uh, number generator. Um, so random r equals new random. Uh, and then we'll say progress equals r dot get, uh, what was it, next int? Yeah, next int. And the bound will be, I don't remember if it's inclusive or exclusive, but I don't particularly care, so we'll just do 99. Oops. And uh, obviously this is just to simulate some kind of a dynamic user interface. And so when I click fire event, it should change. And it's not changing, which is totally fine. This is why we're, uh, this is what we're working on. Um, I'll have to check and see if that's actually, actually doing the updating. So um, we're not having anything occur. Oh, you know what? I think I know what it is. I don't think I implemented that function in the logic class. Yeah, I didn't at all. Okay. So let's do a, um, let's say get data. Uh, create method, yes. Um, we're actually going to, I'm gonna copy and paste this in there because uh, there's no point in repeating myself. 
Um, so from here we'll call get data, and then also when we call that function we will invoke get data. And so that'll hopefully work. I don't know if I'll bother. I guess what I can do here is we'll say view vm dot uh, set left switch uh, with interaction dot get event dot get value I think or get value actually I think it is yeah and then we'll have to cast that to a boolean. And we'll do the same thing down here. Let's just finish this all off. Set right switch. Okay, let's uh, give that a shot. Oh yeah, no worries. Respect tech. Um, okay. Was that a crash or what's going on? Okay. Okay, that's uh, that's basically what I wanted. Now we're gonna do one last thing. So here's the thing: um, when I toggle one of these switches, um, the view should automatically be reflective of what is in the view model because when the user clicks on it, it changes the state of this widget. Now, how this thing basically works is we the user clicks on it um, through here. We send a message to the logic class that a particular switch was clicked, and we send the state of that view. Excuse me. We hop into the logic class. We update the view model, and based on our uh, publisher subscriber um, setup that should go to set left switch the uh, if this works then the view eventually when all that happens even though it's technically kind of redundant we should wind up in this function down here update bool and then we should wind up in set checked so to verify that this is occurring I'm just going to use the debugger so let's uh, I want to know which one is getting selected. So we will, um, let's go ahead and load the debugger and see if that works properly. Okay, um, looks like it's working. Let's just run through it. I don't remember setting so many uh, breakpoints here. Okay, let's just get to a basic state. All right, so now we're going to toggle the left one and we'll see if that gets picked up by our debugger. Yep. Uh, true, so it should be... Um, set checked equals true. So I believe after, we, after I hit um, play, it should turn into true unless I've mixed something up. Yep, there we go. Okay. All right, folks, that's, uh, we're good to go. Let me, um, so I'll stick around for a few minutes because I'm sure a few of you have some questions. While I'm in full webcam cam horror mode, um, I will share this on GitHub and then we'll share the link right away. There's probably still a few things I don't wanna do here, but I'm, I'm sure uh, somebody at, Somebody asked if I could share this code, and I'm happy to do that. So just give me a minute here. Okay. Uh, anyways, uh, hopefully you all enjoyed at least some of that. I know some of you showed up later. Um, early in this live stream, holy crap, I've been live for over two hours. That's incredible. Early on, we talked about, we looked at a diagram of this architecture and what my goals were. So you're going to want to rewatch the um, that part of the video later. Okay, share on GitHub. Android clean UI architecture. Um, should I do? Uh, 
I'm just trying to think, should I make a Kotlin branch or should I do a different repository? Uh, I think I'll just make a Kotlin branch. Um, basic uh, framework minimalist clean GUI architecture. Okay. And what do I want to add in? Um, just a pro tip for people watching this who share repositories, you generally don't want to add your idea folder if you're using idea. Um, I do typically include the, uh, um, the Gradle stuff. You don't necessarily need to include the Gradle wrapper. Um, the person's Android studio should typically figure that out, but uh, I think I'll probably just leave that in. We don't need that. We don't need that. Um, I think the rest is basically fine. Won't need that. Okay. You know how I do. Okay, and let me post the link. All right, there we go, people. So, uh, thank you for watching my long ass live stream where I solve practical problems in software architecture live using advanced features of Java. Uh, probably if you're watching this, you know who I am and what I do. But if you want to learn to code like me, I have courses down below available with a free trial on Skillshare if you're not already signed up to Skillshare. I have courses on Udemy. I have this YouTube channel with hundreds of videos. So uh, you're very welcome, L4Z. Happy to help. Thank you for watching, everybody. I wish you all a happy weekend. And don't forget, tomorrow at... 9 a.m. GMT minus 8, I will be doing my live stream Q&A session where instead of building things live, I answer questions live. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And peace out. I'm going to go uh, jump in my long boat and row across the English Channel. That was a joke.